We'd like to invite everybody to make their way to their seats. Start getting them eats. We can. Please pop up if you are new to the Mosaic Project. Brand new. I've played a lot of great shows and with a lot of great musicians, but nothing feels better to me uh, than playing here at home with my family. Um, singing Woo! these songs that I, I really believe in these songs. Um, I'm really proud of them, not only because I got to help write them, um, but because these songs um, are mosaic. Uh, they're the curriculum, everything we teach at Mosaic. Uh, there's a song that goes along with it. And these songs have the power to travel all over the world and uh, spread mosaic. And I, I believe that it's the work I do with the Mosaic Project that is the most important part of my life, the most important thing that I could do to contribute to the world. <laughs> it is my honor and my pleasure, my joy, to introduce to you 10 beautiful people, each one of whom is representing a year that Mosaic has been in action. Almost 10 years ago, this woman named Laura Mandel calls me up, and she tells me that she's going to change the world. She tells me that she has this idea that bringing children together from different backgrounds could really make a difference in human relations. The very first year that Mosaic ran programs, I got to go, and I was even more floored. I could not believe what was going on. So at the end of the week, I said to Laura, I've been working on social justice issues my entire life, and this is the most important social justice work I know of. What really floored me when I was this youth leader was watching these kids say, yeah, I've seen this problem, I've, I've, you know, I, I think it's bad, but then it, there's a seamless transition into what can they do. Very quickly, they start brainstorming about ways they can change the environment around them. And, and that was what just inspired me for the rest of my life. My name is Cameron Gordon, I was year three. I came to the Mosaic when I was in the fourth grade, I think I was eight, I'm not sure, now I'm 18. I actually came back as a cabin leader, youth leader, three times, actually. I couldn't get enough. So I came back, and the reason I came back was because when I was a student, I had a cabin leader whose name was Gary. He was, like, the coolest thing walking. And he was just so, so positive and so happy. He was always so nice, and I just felt like... If I could come back and be somebody else's Gary, then that would just mean the world to me. It was one of the most amazing weeks of my life, definitely. And even when I was there, I knew that I had sort of flipped a switch that couldn't go back. And I felt that my life had been changed really, really positively. And I just have a quick memory I'd like to share with you. I was in fifth grade, and as uh, there's a solo hike that you take at the end. And so I went on that, and then we were out in the meadow and we were all singing, and Brett was jamming on his guitar, and we were just looking at the beautiful panorama of stars. And I just remember being completely and truly happy because I was at a space where I felt like anything was possible if I put my mind to it. And I still go back to that moment now because it just reminds me of a time where I felt like I could change the world. They appreciated everything about me, and I just loved that. And so... I think I need to show my appreciation to Mosaic by um, being a camp leader this spring. And I want to give the youth the same feeling I did. It was incredible, and I love Mosaic forever. And sometimes places like school or other things in your life can discourage you and break you down. But Mosaic is a place where you can go to build yourself back up. Hi, my name is Marvon, and I represent Year 8, and I'm proud to be on Mosaic First Student Board. And Mosaic has helped me to learn how to talk instead of just fight. Now, every single time I get mad, I think of the song, Fighting is Not the Solution. Sing, I sing it in my mind, and then I, I, would, I, would, uh, I don't get mad as much. And um, Mosaic um, needs to keep going, because if everyone has the same experience I did, the, the world would be 
just full of peace and a just society. Uh, we used to make fun of other people of like different race or different skin color or different religion. And we went there and we met other people with different, they weren't the same as, they weren't the same as us outside of their skin. And we met them and we knew they were the same as us. They were funny, they were smart, and they were, in, they were just like us. Mosaic what really taught me is that to be more open-minded and make friends with other re religions, races, and backgrounds. If I hadn't come to Mosaic, I wouldn't be friends with my friend here, IK. Children need to know that peace is possible. Studies show that people start to exhibit prejudice between two and a half and eight years old. So we cannot wait to teach children about conflict resolution, diversity, being peacemakers in their community, and yet we're the only program that we know of doing this work with young children in a res residential setting. Studies also show that our schools are as segregated now as they were in the 60s. When I tell many people that, they don't believe that, but that's true here in the Bay Area too. Our schools are extremely segregated, and I believe that this segregation is just flat out dangerous. Research in contact theory shows that that's how it has to be done. It is not enough just to bring people from different backgrounds together and throw them together. They have to come together for a prolonged period of time, work on common goals, and address issues of prejudice head on deliberately, exactly what we're doing. And yet again, we're the only ones we know of in the world that we know of now that is doing this work with children. And after working for 10 years with close to 5,000 students in our outdoor school, we see that it works. Our students learn that their skills and their actions matter because we're all interconnected. Our actions affect each other reverberating outwards to our families, our community, and ultimately the world. So every single conversation, every single reaction, every single interaction can make peace possible. Peace is not some grand, fuzzy concept so far removed from us that we can't do anything about it. It begins with us, with the quiet contemplations in our own hearts, the words that come out of our mouths, the expressions on our faces, and the actions that we take daily. Our students don't just learn about peace, they taste it, they experience it, they create it. They don't just believe that it's possible, they know it is. With your help, we'll move through these challenging times and our doors will stay open. Our work will continue through the next decade and beyond to touch the lives of thousands of children and they will continue to make peace possible. If we are to reach real peace in the world, we shall have to begin with the children. Let's make a wish, and we can all blow out the candles, or the whatever they are, the firecrackers. One.